Alrighty, alrighty. Uh, turn to Proverbs chapter 18. We're going to start there. Um, Holy Spirit spoke to me, I, I guess it had to be about, about a month, maybe two ago. And, um, and he just, I, I don't know what it was. I don't know. I think it's just one of those things that you, you're, you're praying about things and the Holy Spirit just kind of shows up uh, and, and says something like this. But uh, he said, my people don't really believe me uh, that the words of their mouth matter. Because if they did, they'd change the words of their mouth. Um, they've heard it, but they don't really believe it. Um, and and uh, or, or, they, or they don't really want to change. In other words, it would be easier to complain than take responsibility for for doing it myself, right? And, and again, I, I know I know some of us are going, "Well, Pastor Thad, not not me." But I, I know, I mean, I've had several people come up to me and go, "You know, uh, yeah, you're if you're not talking to anybody else, I, I'm not taking it as seriously as I should have." Um, and and so after that, I was kind of like, "Okay." Um, and again, and again, before anybody sits there and thinks, oh, Pastor Thad heard us talking and he's, he's mad at us or whatever, uh, God talks to me before he talks to you. And so it's, th it's things that I have to make sure that I, I'm doing correctly. And, um, and, and so, so he, he said, I want you to get going on this. And he said, yeah, I'll tell you, you know, when, you, when you've taught it enough, it'll be enough. Um, so I don't know how long we're going to be talking about the words of your mouth. And the importance of it, um, but uh, we're gone for a while at least, I guess. Um, but you are living today in the words that you spoke yesterday, and that's not just a cliche. It's it's the truth of the Word of God. Um, it, it tells us there in Proverbs chapter eighteen. I'm just going to read verse twenty and twenty one. I guess this can become our springboard verse. Um, now, now the first two weeks we we, we springboard with John ten ten just to really bring out that point that God wants us blessed. A lot of people don't believe in the words of their mouth because they believe that God will do whatever He wants to do and, uh, and, and that, that's it. In other words, if God wants me sick, I'll be sick. That's why I'm sick. Because it's not anything... It takes, it takes blame off of you and puts it completely on God. Now, if, we, if we would go back to my illustration I used a couple weeks ago about if I told you tomorrow morning, come in at 9, nine o'clock in the morning, um, between 9 o'clock and, and 9.05, I've got a stack of $100 bills. i got, got a million-dollar stack for anybody that comes in between 9 and 9.30. I would guarantee you that most of you would go, I'll get off work. I'll, I'll, I'll get up a little earlier. I'll come in my pajamas. I don't care how I look, but I'll be there between 9 and 9.05 to get, to get it. Now, if you showed up at 9.30 and I said, sorry, it's not there, you can blame it on me all you want. You can say, oh, well, well, Pastor, that just didn't want me to have it. If he would have wanted me to have it, he would have said from 9.30, he would have said, just come from between 9 and 10. He just didn't want me to have it. You can blame it on me if you want, but you'd be inaccurate. Because I just, I, I gave you just you one thing you had to do is be here between 9 and, and 9.10. How many of you would have been here at 8.50 to make sure you, there, there was no traffic? That, that you didn't get behind somebody that was driving slow? How many, how many of you rushing out of your house at, not, at 8.55, run, and then you get behind the, the tractor that's going 35 miles an hour, and it's his fault you didn't get your reward? I, I know I'm, I'm getting nosy here. I understand that. I'm not talking about punctuality. I'm just simply saying that, it, that if there was something you could do in order to, to, see, to see something manifest in your life, you'd do it. You, you, you would make plans to do it. Well, that's just simply the way it is with this. Is that, is that if you really believe that Pastor Thad was going to do that, had the ability to do that, then you would lay aside every other thing that you had going on and show up. Because even if even if your boss said, if you show up late, you'll be without a job. I don't care. Pastor Thad's going to give me a million dollars. I can 
pace myself and get me a new job. Maybe. Later. In a couple of years, right? Right? It, you, you don't, you're not going to be. Now, all God is saying here is that death and life. Let's, let's go to verse 20. It says, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. What comes off out of his mouth? Remember, he told the disciples, he said, it's not what goes in the man's mouth that defiles a man. It's what comes out of his mouth. So that's what he's talking about here. He's not saying, listen, he's not saying here, and I understand what you're saying, but the fruit of something is the produce of something, not the intake of something. Are you with me? The fruit of a tree isn't the fertilizer that went in the soil. It's the apples that appear on it. And so it says here that a man's belly shall be satisfied with the produce or with what comes off of his mouth, not what goes into his mouth. So you're going to get full. You're going to be satisfied in life because of what comes out of your mouth. And with the increase of his lips, can, can, can we say increase with me? Increase. What does increase mean? More. So the more that comes out of your mouth, you will be filled. Your belly shall be satisfied if you can get it in your mouth. And if you can get only it in your mouth, you will be stuffed. If you can eliminate, listen, if you can, if you can, some of us are really good at not speaking death or not speaking sickness over you. You know, things like scared me to death and, or something on that. We, we're really good. We've eliminated those kind of, the, those cliches that are just kind of just speak death in. Um, we, we're really good at that, but maybe there's other areas in our life that we're not so good at. Well, you're, well, you're, you're, you're corrected. You're, you're, you may be strong in one area. But if you will get in all those areas, what does it say in James chapter 3, verse 2? A person that doesn't stumble in their mouth is a perfect man, perfect person, able to, able to control their whole body. So if you can just change the words of your mouth, you'll be satisfied. But my goodness, if you can complete, if you can increase that, if you can do it more and more and more, you're going to be stuffed. Why? Because death and life, verse 21, are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So whatever fruit comes out your mouth is the fruit you're going to enjoy in life. If, 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 you're, if you're talking icky fruit, stinky fruit, poisonous fruit, guess what you're going to enjoy in life? <laughs> icky fruit, poison fruit. But if you're speaking the good in life, if you're speaking the good of the Word of God, if that's what comes out your mouth, then guess what kind of fruit you're going to enjoy in life? Guess what kind of stuff's going to be developing your life? I, I just, uh, Jesse DePlanis said it like this, never sabotage your future with your own words. I think that's as simple as, 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 as can be said. Um, never sabotage your tomorrows with what you said today. <sighs> Listen, I understand, I understand how good it feels. I don't, I, I, the only thing, I, I don't understand why it feels so good just to say something mean or say something ugly or say something at lack, at lack of faithically. You like, that's a new word. Lack of faithically. Um, I don't know why it feels so good, except for the fact that it's so dangerous and the enemy deals with your flesh. And, it, and, and, and because he knows the danger it can bring, he, he, brings, he brings such peace and, and, and calmness in your heart. It's just like, it's like, uh, you know, I've not been saying this, but 
Okay, I'm just, allergies just eat me up. They overwhelm me. They, they overtake me. Every, this time, every year, this time, every year, I, my nose is running. My, I'm, sn I'm snotting it up. I'm snarling up. I'm clogged up. I got to stick, stick stuff, sports cuff up this. I got to do this. Isn't it frustrating for you? And inside you're going, ooh. But guess what fruit you're, pl you, you're, you're planting? I used to say, um, y'all remember, I, didn't, I never realized that allergies were a thing. I remember several years ago, I started getting what I felt was like uh, tension headaches. Because they say tension headaches are like that, that crown or whatever. And I, I just would feel it. And, and I, it just, I hated the feeling of it. And Jessica goes, I think you have allergies. I said, no, I don't get allergies. And now, now before that, if you'll remember, about every year, I don't know if it was in the spring, but I, it happened a couple times every year. I would completely lose my voice. Remember when I'd completely lose my voice and I'd sit up there and I'd be, I'd be singing and I'd be like, nope, healed men sing. And I'd be like, rrr, rrr, rrr. I sound like the seals at, at, at SeaWorld. Like, sing for us. Rrr, rrr, rrr. That's how I sounded. And I, but I was like, healed men sing. So I'd, I'd sing and I didn't know why I was losing my voice. Why do I lose my voice every year, a couple times every year? But you know what I'd say? Every every couple every year, a couple times a year, I lose my voice. I just have to fight through it. Well, then when it, all of a sudden one day I was like, you know what? There's a reason why every voice I, every year I lose my voice a couple times a year. It's because I was expecting to lose my voice, and I talked about it. So I, I quit saying. The first year, um, I I I, 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 I was like, no, I curse this. I don't lose my voice. I got a strong voice. Um, now my, my dad, when, when we were in Illinois, he preached a lot. Plus he did television, plus he did radio and radio then wasn't just a, uh, his sermon. He'd ha he'd go into a studio in the church and, and say, this is Ron Callahan. <laughs> yeah. What, what was this, uh, radio station, radio name, TV? You remember the name of the show? It's a miracle. He did. This. And then he'd do this. He'd, he, had, he had a one minute spot every morning on Good Morning America in our local area. I mean, he'd, he'd have all these kind of things. So, I mean, he was constantly talking, constantly preaching. And so, but, and so he, he would sing and he would just sing very calmly and very, um, he, he'd sing in, a, in, in an alto voice because it was a lower register and he'd just kind of sing a little, sing calmly. He had a good voice, he, very good voice. He, he, I mean, uh, when he first started in his ministry, he sang a lot. Um, but he, but he, and, but a lot of it was just because his voice was so tired. I mean, if you, if you, I love my dad's voice. Always wanted to have my dad's voice. I always thought then that would be the best thing in the whole entire world to have my dad's voice. And I know, I, I know my voice is, is, is Thad Callahan's voice. I get that. Uh, but, uh, but I was like, if I could just have my dad's voice, I will have made it. Cause he had this, he had this cool voice. It had it had it had the had this just clear sound. It, it, I don't say clear sound, distinguished sound with just enough rasp on it that you could tell there was experience in that voice. You know what I'm saying? It was it wasn't like, but it just had you could tell there was there was some experience in that voice. Um, and I just thought that'd be okay. Uh, one one I've told you the story before. One day I I I found a CD that was blank. And I was like, I wonder what's on there, and I put it in. And I go, oh, it's Dad's sermon. That's cool. I'll listen to it for a while. And so I'm listening to it for a while, and I'm going, man, this guy's good. This guy can flat out teach. I was getting so blessed by his sermon, and I and I was going, and then all of a sudden he started talking about something that happened to him one time earlier in his ministry, and uh, I was like, that is really weird. I'd never heard that him tell that story, but that happened to me when I was in my ministry. And then he goes on a little bit further and. I'm really kind of weird. I'm confused that it took me this long to figure it out because I was well into the sermon. It, it was when he finally started talking about his wife, Jessica, that I realized, hold it a second. <laughs> Dad don't have a wife, Jessica. That's me. I, I got the wife, Jessica. Um, so yeah, it was kind of weird. But, uh, but, <laughs> but, but see, <laughs> I, 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 my, my voice, I, I, I don't, I don't, Cut back on singing. 
The only time that I remember this year that I cut back, I know some of y'all going, maybe you should cut it. Uh, the only time this year I remember cutting back on, on, on my singing uh, was the as a Wednesday night that Sister Ruth came in and she was in the middle of that fight and that headache and I knew she was doing everything she could to sit there. So instead of instead of singing from here, I just sang very gently, controlled. And uh, Jessica was like, "Yep, I could tell you were under control." Because I, I don't, I, I'm like, "Hey, I've got a strong voice. It's a clear voice. It's a voice that 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 is not going to get worn down. Cannot get worn down because it is strong. And allergies cannot play with my voice." Allergies are cursed over me, right? But, but, but see, when I was expecting it, I spoke it. When I spoke it, I got it. And I, and I know that it's, I, but whatever comes out of your mouth is a fruit. Um, have you ever woke up in the morning, looked at your spouse and said, this is not going to be a good day. This is going to be a rough day. Um, I, I, this person is called in. This person's not there. It's going to be a long, it's going to be a booger of a day. You may ever said anything like that. Woke up with full expectation of it being a horrible day. <laughs> I'm not asking you to. I'm just, I'm, I'm enjoying the looks on many faces going. Some of you are going, yeah. And some of you are really working hard at no expression at all. Your, <laughs> your face is twitching. <laughs> um, but now I know some of y'all might be going, uh, well, it surprised me that it, how, how good it was. But most of you are going, it turned out to be a really rough day. But you woke up and you, pain, you, you told the day what it was going to be. You already told it it was going to be long and it was going to be hard and it was going to be frustrating. Get up in the morning, paint your day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. He daily, just find those scriptures. He daily, is today a day? Yep. Well, then He daily loads me with benefits. I mean, we, you just keep going on that. I made her mad. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> when you, the words that you speak are painting your tomorrows. You may get by with it for a little while. I'm, again, some people say, what do you mean get by with it? In other words, you may by your willpower work hard enough to overcome certain things. And for a little while, you, could, you may be able to dodge what, you've been, what you're creating with your mouth. Um, if, if I planted a, a, a cherry tree and I put the seed in the ground, um, there could be a lot of days that I... Let's think of it like this. Um, my wife loves to plant things. And I'm okay with it when she plants it in the flower beds. I mean, seriously, my wife has the greenest thumb of anybody I know. Her mama had a green thumb, and Jessica is second generation green thumb. I mean, she she is really good it, with with plants. But sometimes she gets really ambitious and will like, plant a tree or plant something out in the middle of, of the grass where I mow. Anybody that mows a lot knows it's really fun just to sit on a cruise and just go in a straight line. And, and when those trees get in the way, it's kind of like, and, and, and so sometimes she'll plant things. Well, see, if it's planted under the ground, you can have mercy for a while. You can mow up closely and, and, and not destroy the crop, what's been planted. But when it starts to spring up, that, that's when you, you try to cut in close and you get too close and you just end up cutting off the top of it. You keep cutting down what God wants to do by the words that you spoke. In other words, you may get by with it for a little while without, without cutting it down, but there's going to come a time where it's chopped down. And, 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 you're, and you sit there and go, why? We go back to, to the illustration I used earlier uh, about, uh, about the, uh, the, the, the hole in your roof. 
we sit back and we think, I don't understand why things just aren't working out the way they should be working out. Why is there water on the floor in my house? Uh, honey, I love you, but there's a hole in your roof. It shouldn't be that hard. You need to clog up the hole. And beloved, so many Christians go, go their, just go day after day and again, they change their theology because they have to blame God for the, for the water on their ground when it's just a hole they need to clog up and they need to start getting the right words in their mouth, start speaking the right things over their life. Um, go over to Isaiah 57. God created us in Genesis chapter, chapter 1. He created us in His image. We all, we all understand that, Correct. In other words, he said, let us make man in our image. And so in their image, he created man. Which, beloved, uh, it's an interesting thing uh, because you understand that angels got booted out of heaven for doing things that men have done, do all the time. It's, it, I know, I know it's, it's weird, but, uh, but, but when, when he said, I'm going to do this. When Lucifer said, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Beloved, can I ask you a question? In all due love, you don't have to answer me again. When was the last time that you made a decision without God's input? Without being directed by the Holy Spirit? That's all the angels were doing. That's all he was doing. Was, and, and I understand, but he said he was going to take the throne, that he was going to ascend to the mountaintop. He's going to do. What do you think we're doing when we, when we think that our opinion matters more than God's? God, God, God understands that, that I don't have enough money to tithe, so I'm not going to bring my tithe into the storehouse. How many here are grateful for God's forgiveness of those times where you decided that, that you knew better than he did? But that's what Lucifer did. Lucifer just did that, and he got him booted out of heaven. Now, here, here's the thing is angels have the ability to choose. They don't have the right to choose. In other words, they can do whatever they want to do, but they were created for one purpose. And that was, well, to glorify Him and to, do, and, and to obey the words of, of His. What, what, I have it, do have it written down today. Psalm 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye His angels, that excel in strength and do His commandments, hearkening to the voice of His words. So they have one. They have two jobs. One is to glorify Him and to praise Him, and the other is to respond to His word. His word when it's spoken, and that's it. They don't have the when they choose to do on their own. I fall. I saw Satan fall like lightning. Right, uh, because they they do that. Mankind was created in the same way God is. Is that we have the ability to choose? We have the right to choose. Uh, Deuteronomy tells us that I, I set before you life and death. You choose. You have the right to choose. You have the right to go down that path. And he's not going to. He, he's not going to just th throw you into hell, in the pit of hell, cuz. But your life may look like it. God created us in His own image, and when He said, "Light be," light was. And like God, our words carry power. And over in Isaiah 57, verse 19, it says this. It says, I create the fruit of the lips. Notice, this is God speaking. He, 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 it identifies it a couple verses before that. And he says, I create the fruit of the lips. Now, again, we just go back to, to don't go back to Proverbs, but when we go back to Proverbs, that's what it said there. Is that you are literally going to produce in your life what comes off your lips. God here says, I, I, create what comes off your mouth and you can choose peace or you can choose the other but if you choose peace i will heal you if you choose shalom i will heal you beloved when you speak all of heaven's forces go to work on your behalf to create what you have said so when you say your own opinion when you when you say your own thoughts you still are creating the statement I read the first week, week from Keith Butler that said both Satan and the angels will use your words. 
So you, you have, you are, you are created in His image. You are not the God, but you are His image. Your chips off the old block. And beloved, whether you like it or not, your mouth creates the same way God's mouth creates. When it comes out of your mouth to curse a thing, it will be cursed. When it comes out of your mouth to bless a thing, it will be blessed. Right off the top of my head, when Jesus walked by the fig tree and it wasn't there, He cursed it and it died immediately in its roots. When God, when, when there was a blessing pronounced on Israel in Numbers and, and, uh, and Balak was trying to get Balaam to curse it, he said, what God has declared a blessing over, I can, no man can curse it. And so, beloved, when you are speaking the word of God, when you are speaking out of your mouth what God says, the truth of the word of God, you are creating the blessings of God all over your life. Everything that your life touches. But I'd rather complain about my coworker. Well, then, then, then don't expect anything to change. But I've got all the women's Bible study, all the women's ministries, all the women's prayer team. They're all praying for me. But this person just is a jerk. They're horrible. They, every day they do something new to, to don't be surprised. When the, when, when the armies of prayer warriors that you have that can be effective, that are usually effective, are not being affected over you because you are the one speaking death and curses over your life. Go to Deuteronomy 30 real quick. I don't have this until the end of the message, but it keeps coming up in my spirit that I need to get here right now. Verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. You can have either. Now, isn't that weird? Isn't that just the weirdest thing in the world? That God says, I've given, you the, I've given you these two things and you can have either one. Because there ain't nobody in the world that would say, I just want to curse. And yet God in His wisdom says, but you got to choose. Would you choose life? Would you choose the blessing? It's up to you to choose. You say, okay, I choose. No. You choose by what you say. You choose by the words that come out of your mouth. Because if the words come out of your mouth go contrary to the world to the word of God, your angels are stagnant. They are cuffed. They are, they, 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 they are, they are held uh, where they cannot do anything for you. And, they, and, and it grieves their heart. The only thing they want to do is hear the word of God. And when they hear the word of God, they go to work. And some people say, well, if that's the case, then I'll say it right, real quick. And, and, and it should be done real quick. Well, how long did the angels fight in, da in Daniel's behalf? That wasn't an overnight thing. You choose. How do we choose, Pastor Thad? You choose by the words of your mouth. That's why it shouldn't surprise us that this is one of the most difficult areas for us to master. That's why James literally says that, man, we can tame all sorts of animals. But, but the mouth is untamable. But it's untamable by man. It's literally, he says, he's man, man can tame. You don't have to have spiritual insight to tame a dog or to tame a horse or, or, or whatever. You don't have to have spiritual insight for that. A man can do that, but a man in his flesh cannot take care of the tongue. But a man who has yielded his tongue, yielded his words over to the, to the ways of God, to the word of God, that person now has the ability to, to, to create in his life peace and shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Absolute fullness of life. But you've got to take care of your mouth. Uh, 
there was a uh, man who attended the church that Sherry and I grew up with in, in Illinois. And um, I remember him. He was a part of the youth. I, I think the young, I don't know if he was part of the youth group there. I don't remember that. I think he was a little bit older than that. Um, so I remember him being a part of the young adults, him and his wife. And uh, you could always tell that he was like called. He, 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 was, he was a very good Christian, man of God. Um, and, and when we, uh, when we moved down here, of course, we lost track of a lot of the people that were in Illinois. Uh, those were long before the days of social media. Uh, there's so many of them that, you know, social media has helped me get back in touch with. I think y'all probably would say similar things. Um, but, but several years ago, um, he got in contact with my dad. His name was Harold Eatman. It is Harold Eatman. He passed away a couple years ago during the COVID uh, thing. Um, but uh, but he got in contact with my dad to let my dad know what he was doing. And apparently he uh, uh, he developed, or, or I guess developed is a safe word, um, a, a powerful prophetic ministry where where the Lord would show him things. And, and, and I mean, he would... There were several uh, national, international things that, that uh, the Lord would show him and, and made people money or lost people money if they didn't believe it. That's why I guess uh, Chronicles says, believe your prophets, so shall you prosper. Um, but, uh, but after he got back in touch with my dad, uh, I, I think my dad went and spoke for him. I don't know how it was, but finally my dad had him come to Grace Lexington. And um, and it was it was funny. It was it was entertaining uh, to watch uh, him come in, very confident in his gift. Um, and then you got people. Uh, you had sibling rivalries happen with my dad. Uh, of the of the, it was it was funny, but it was interesting when people began understanding the accuracy behind his prophecies. How many people would come and they'd be they they they'd just pray. They'd hope. They'd hope. Oh, please, please speak over me. I want to know what's going to happen in my life. If he will speak over me and tell me something good, that'll make me happy in my life because I know that it, it will be. I mean, uh, I know Sherry and Mike are, are two that, that he spoke over many times. Um, I, only, I think I only sat in one service. He spoke over us. Um, I wished I would have I'd have kept the tape. Uh, I, I, I just lost it somehow. I remember parts of it. Um, but I know Sherry and Mike are ones that go, yeah, he's like the only prophet I've ever, we've ever had that when he spoke over us, it comes to pass. Um, and um, he was one that, that Sherry and Mike called on uh, shortly after Dad passed away for, for insight. Um, but he, but he, people would get in his service and be like, man, I hope he... Pr- I hope he preaches over or speaks over me. Oh, call me out. Call me out. And, and of course, there's always the ones that are like, please don't talk to me about. <laughs> don't say anything about me, please. I've had it a secret this far. I don't want it to ruin now. Um, but uh, but he, he just, he'd call out. He'd call them out. And people would be like, oh, what's, what's God going to say about my tomorrows? Because they wanted to hear the prophet speak to know what was coming. Um. 2020, 2019, 2020 in that area. I guess it was 2020 uh, during the uh, presidential election. Um, I think I think prophets came out of the woodwork, and um, I, I I know no prophet. I know no prophet. I can know no prophet that said Biden was going to win. I, I don't know. Some of y'all might have some. That, that, that's good. I, I'd hold close to that person. Um, but but how many of those prophets did we sit and cling to their words? Even you know, especially after election day, when the, when it was like it's like you said they were gonna uh, that Trump was gonna be president, and we sat there and it's like if that dude, if that guy can would just say that that everything is gonna be okay, and that and that President Trump's still gonna be president, if we if he'll just say that. That's going to calm me down because I know the prophet's going to speak what's going to come and, and it's going to be okay if we can just hear the prophet say it. Now, there's a lot of prophets, I believe, that do need 
Uh, there's, there's several that are still saying, yeah, Trump's going to become president. Hold on until 2020, you know, 2024. It may be. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll remain quiet about that. Um, <clears throat> but we would turn them on. We turn them on YouTube. We turn, turn them on Christian TV. Um, and, and all we wanted them to was to tell us something good so that we knew that tomorrow's were going to be good. Now, now again, the prophetic gift is one. Uh, I, we go back to um, when, when, when Paul, the Apostle Paul, came across to go back to Jerusalem. And, and, and we had those that were uh, prayer warriors that the Holy Spirit was giving insight into what was to come. And they kept begging Paul not to go to Jerusalem. Remember that? And, and, uh, and, and Paul was like, don't tell me that, man. i got to go to Jerusalem. It's, it's what's inside of me. But they begged him because that, but that's not your job. When you're a prayer warrior and God, and God shows you something, your job is to what? Pray. Pray protection. Pray, pray for help. Pray for what, whatever he needs. Wisdom, whatever he needs. Your job is not to tell somebody not to do something. And then they, he went to Philip's daughters, and there were, there were four virgins who, uh, who did prophesy. In other words, they had, they had uh, um, the, gift, the gift of, uh, yeah, the gift, the spiritual gift of prophecy. So they would they they were encouragers, but then he had uh, is it, uh, Antipas and something like that. I, I mess up that name sometimes. Uh, who came and he was a prophet, and he said, "This is what's going to happen to whoever wears this belt when they go to Jerusalem." That was all. Paul went to Jerusalem expecting something. Because the prophet spoke it to come. Now let's go to Matthew 11. Paul was not really surprised. I think, I, I think sometimes we might be surprised how it happened, why it, why it happened, but that it happened, he wasn't surprised that he got um, put in the barracks. And he got shipped off. Why? Because the prophet said, this is what is going to come. This is what awaits the guy that, whose belt this is, which was his belt. Um, but see, that's, that's us. We want to hear the prophetic voice. Because if we'll hear the prophetic voice, we will know what's coming around the corner. Go over here. Look, look, check this out. Matthew chapter 11, verse 7. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, John the Baptist, uh, what went you out to the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with a wind? Um, but what went you out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they, were, uh, they that wear soft clothing are in the king's houses. What did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes. I say unto you, and more than a prophet. Uh, the amplified version on that one. In other words, when they went out there, what are you expecting to see when you saw John? You know, this dude, this polished dude, or you just a prophet, someone that spoke what God said, spoke what was to come, right? The amplified version of, of verse 9 says, uh, What did you go out to see? A prophet? Yeah. I tell you, and one out of the common, more eminent, more remarkable, and superior to a prophet. In other words, what what the next verse will, will well next verse says, um, well verse eleven among women there were no prophets that even matched up to John the Baptist. John the Baptist came and he said and he was preaching that there's one coming. There's one coming on the scene. Behold, when Jesus came to be baptized. In in other words, he was see what's come. People heard what was to come. People would expect out of his mouth. That's why they would listen to him. And in verse 11, it says, um, it says, among them that are born of women, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. He is the greatest prophet. But then notice that last phrase. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than him. Now, I want you to see this here. He's talking about a man who was a prophet. The thing, that, the thing that identified John the Baptist was that he was a prophet. And now he says, he that is in the kingdom of heaven, not a prophet that's in the kingdom of heaven, 
just whoever is in the kingdom of heaven, and that the least person in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he, than greater than John the Baptist. Now I'm going to say this, and then I'll, I'll, I'll bring out the point that I really want to get here. You and I were born under a, under a new covenant, a covenant better and more powerful than the old covenant in which John the Baptist was uh, operated and other prophets operated. Our covenant is more powerful because Jesus died, went to hell, defeated death, death hell, and the grave. Um, and that same anointing that he operated under to defeat death, hell, and the grave now abides in us. We are, we are now the body of that anointing. We now house the anoint, the very anointing that Jesus took down in, in, into, into uh, Hades to defeat Satan on his turf. That same anointing now dwells in us. How much more power relies in us than on prophets that would the Spirit would come upon at times. How much more power resides in us, through us, day in and day out. And I love the fact that what Jesus is talking about here is John the Baptist as a prophet in context. He's saying you went to see a prophet and now he that is least in the kingdom of God has more authority, more power than what John the Baptist did. I'm going to make this statement. Uh, I, 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 can't, I can't take ownership of it, but I ain't telling you anything else. So I'll, the only person you can quote is me. You and I are the greatest prophets over our own lives. You and I, we, we, you can go searching for it. You can search high and low for someone who will prophesy over me a good prophet prophecy. But beloved, if you'll just change the way you speak, you are prophesying your tomorrows. If you start speaking healing over your body, you don't need to go to a prophet and, and him go, I can see you running a marathon. You speak over your body and start exercising. You speak over your body. You let it come out of your mouth and you are prophesying your tomorrow. And because the anointing that dwells in you, it is greater than any Old Testament prophet could ever operate in. We want to hear a prophet speak over our lives so we'll know what's coming up in our lives. Just tape record your conversations. I, the, the cool thing about, I remember Jerry Savelle talking about that, where he was so angry because, because Kenneth Copeland's ministry was taking off, was going good, and then all he was stuck was in debt, never had enough, was in his little house, uh, was, was frustrated, and he's like, Lord, what's the problem? It wasn't that the one where he rolled his reel down the and God goes, Well, your answer is rolling down the street. And he said, It's the words of your mouth. And he said, What are you talking about? I can I make confessions all the time. And then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit is like he turned on a, a tape player and started playing in his mind all the little things he says throughout the day that was prophesying hard times. Listen, folks, let, let, let me let me let me say it to you like this. You may look at it just words of your mouth. But if you will change the concept of what's coming out of your mouth, and, and instead of just words, call it a prophecy. Let me get on this side so make sure the camera gets me full-fledged here. You wake up in the morning, and you say, I prophesy over my life, it's going to be a hard day. That wouldn't make any sense at all. I prophesy over my life that, that, that it's going to be long and hard and tough because this person, this person, this person. That, that, would, be, that would be stupidity. We wouldn't, if we looked at it like that, if we looked like at, it, at our words like they were the prophetic, like we were speaking over our lives, like a prophet would speak over us. If we looked at our words like that, what would we if, we, if we, if we prefaced our comments with, I prophesy over my day, what would you prophesy? What would come out your mouth? Would, would, it, would it be negative? Would it be that nothing ever, I prophesy nothing ever works out good for me. I prophesy that, that, that the more I try, the, the, the further I get from my destination. 
if we use that word up, in, up, up at the front of our conversations, our statements of ourselves, I, I prophesy over my life chaos, chaotic. My life is crazy. If we, if we, if we, if we started with a prophet, we would understand how ignorant, I guess, how dangerous. You say, but I'm not a prophet. You are over your own life. The words that you speak over your life are more important than any word, any other, anybody else in the world. Everybody can say one thing about you, but if you will just change the words of your mouth and start speaking good over you, you can change your tomorrows and make everybody go. Where did that come from? Did you, did you grab a hold of that? Think of your words. Think if you say something. Have you ever said something and it didn't sit easy with you? And then the, what's your next words? But it's the truth. Yeah, we, we try to, but because it, it, it didn't sit right. There was something, you know, your Holy Spirit checker went off. And, 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 but, and so you kind of uh, legitimize it by going, but it's the truth. You need to stop there. Think about what you just said and say it again, but say, I prophesy over. Because that's literally what you're doing. Truth or not? Hallelujah. Goodness gracious, where are we at? Yeah, okay. You and I are the greatest prophets over our own lives. You have what you say. That's the more powerful word, and it will come to pass. Often we speak. We say things to try to get help. If you want someone to help you, you can't paint your life as good, can you? I think I said that one of the first days. If if I if I say that everything, if I say that I'm I'm happy and blessed, how will people know that I need help? Because. You got to believe that God loves you enough to speak to the people. I'm believing for this. I've set my faith on a new car. The car that we have is, is just getting up there in years, and we're setting our faith. We believe in God for a new car. Beloved, you'll get a lot of people in here believing God for a new car for you. You don't have to sit there going, this car never runs right. It's always breaking down. It's, <laughs> it's, we can't, uh, we, we got to use all our faith just to make it from the house to Walmart. We had a car like that, and uh, are you find you find me. There's a way that you you don't have to sit there and just and, and paint the picture of how dire it is. Why? Because when you're painting your picture, you're prophesying your tomorrows. My body aches. Oh, I guess it just comes with age. It comes with age for the world. The redeemed, their bodies are redeemed. Their health is redeemed, restored. Speak the answer. Speak the word. You, have, you ain't got nothing else to say? By his stripes, I was healed. He himself took my infirmities, bore my sickness. He blesses my bread and water and Sickness is far. I mean, sickness ain't just not on me. It can't come in the neighborhood. It's far from the midst of me. Again, if all you're talking about how much you ache, guess what you're creating? Fruit of your lips. You're a creator. Say that. 
Say, I'm a creator. The words I speak are creating in my life. Whether I like it or not. <laughs> oh, Pastor, now why'd you have to throw that on there? That's a, they are. And listen, I, I, we're just, I mean, I, I have, some people would say, oh, Pastor Tad, you've preached three sermons in a row on this. I think you've probably used all the scriptures that you can come on. Oh, no. I've not scratched the surface. I don't know by the end of this, maybe, maybe by the end of the series, I'll, I'll be able to have gotten almost all of them. But I, I don't think I can get all of them even in this series. Some of the directions that the Holy Spirit's leading me on is, is going to challenge me just to even get all, all that stuff. <laughs> well, I don't want to get in all this stuff. This is all get up in your business. You know. My kids are brats. They never listen to me. They make my life hard. Guess what you're creating more of? I, um, I'm remembered of a um, story my dad tells, an account that he tells of an of a interview that he saw on TV of a lady who um, her husband and her were evangelists. And uh, she was on a talk show on one of the Christian channels. Um, but she said when, when she first got born again, her husband wanted no, no, nothing of it. Nothing. She, no. He's like, I don't, I don't. I don't know if he was an atheist, but he just had enough. He, he liked his beer. He liked his stuff. And, and so he should go to church. When she'd go to church, um, people would come up to her and go, hey, you know, they'd meet her. Where's your husband at? Well, she, she had gotten, a, she wasn't going to say, well, he's at home. He's a sinner. He's a heathen. Because all, he, all you're painting is that he's a sinner. He's a heathen. So she would say, oh, my husband, he's an evangelist. He travels up and down, uh, up and down the country, uh, preaching the word of God, seeing miracles. That's all she'd say about him. She would never say what she really saw. She get home, she was encountered with a drunk. But when, but when she talked about him, it was she was creating, she was prophesying over her future. And again, guess who was sitting next to her that day on a TV show? Her husband. Guess what he did? He was an evangelist. He traveled up and down the country uh, declaring, seeing miracles, all that kind of stuff. It's your choice to what you prophesy. You're going to prophesy life or you're going to prophesy death. Let's go to one more scripture, Matthew chapter 12. I think you know what I this one, but this is just this is where we'll, we'll wrap it up at today. We're creators. We we prophesy over over our mouth, and I think again I think this is it's good to say it's good to say it this way. But think instead of thinking of just your confession. What's your confession? Think what's your prophecy? Now again, the prophetic, the prophetic is about what God says. So I'm not sitting there, sitting there saying, I'm, I'm going to marry a tall, uh, you know, six foot blonde with long legs. And, you know, or I'm going to do, you're just, you're just like spewing out, I'm going to do this. I'm whatever. Find in the Word of God what you believe. And don't speak anything other than that. Prophesy it. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. O oh, generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? <laughs> Flattery. For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth good things out of his mouth. And an evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you this, that every idle word that a man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words you're justified, put in a position to partake of the promises of God, and by your words you'll be condemned. Beloved, it comes down to your words. 
And again, there's a couple words there in, in, uh, in chapter 36. The word account is logos, which is spoken word. It's not, it's not revealed word. It's not rhema. It's just logos. It, it's the words that you speak. And, and the word judgment. It's like, when I get to heaven, God's going to say, you said a bad thing there on earth. And it's like, ah, it's the day of judgment. I'm, I'm in trouble now. No, that's under the blood. That day of judgment is, a, is the Greek word K-R-I-S-I-S. Crisis, I'm guessing it, it, it's pronounced. Um, but it is the word we get crisis from. And in other words, this, when you can't control your mouth, when you let your mouth say whatever they, you want to say, and it's not lined up with the word, on the day that a situation arises, on a day where you are... Um, uh, a day, day where the battle rises. Love it. I'm not. If you get your mouth lined up with the word, I am not telling you that you will never face a battle. But I'm telling you, on the day of crisis, and that battle arises, you will now have authority. It's been prophesied over already. It's been spoken over already, and the end has already been been taken care of. Pain hits your body, you've already prophesied over. You've already spoken life into that situation. So you all, all you have to do is say a prayer of something like this. No, you don't. Maybe you don't even may no. And move on. Because there's authority now in your voice, because it's been you've been prophesied over by you. But when you say these blank, empty words, these words that that, that you think don't matter. You've created your mess that you're going to have to operate in when the crisis hits. And as much as God's already given you the victory, He said, he said I've, given you, I've given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. You are more than conquerors. He's already called the end from the beginning. But until you get it in your mouth, until you start speaking over it. See, you know, until you start speaking over it, it's not going to change in your life. I call heaven and I are earth to witness against this day. That means I'm stating under the very court courtrooms of heaven and of earth that the ability to choose life or death lies with you. And if you choose it, you'll change the way you talk. You'll speak over your tomorrows with the same conviction that you would listen to a prophet speak on your tomorrows. Amen? And when the day of crisis hits, you not, I shall not, I shall not be moved. Because I know what I've spoken already. I shall not be moved. Amen? Let's stand together. I'm not up here. God's not a God. I, and I'm, therefore, I can't be up here sitting here going, y'all get yourself straightened up and get this thing. You know, get this... How dare you? I can't. Because again, this, this is a challenge. I, I, I've mentioned this many times, uh, but in Romans 7, um, 18, 19, something like that, Paul says, the good that I want to do, I don't do, and the stuff I don't want to do, I, I do want to do when I'm operating according to my flesh. In... Um, in, J in James where it makes that statement, where it says, no man can control his tongue. That You might look at that and go, that's, why are you even preaching this, Pastor Thad, if we're just, if we're, no, it's that same, it's that same point. No man, you in yourself, it's, it's impossible to do. But if you'll live according to your spirit, build your spirit man up. If you will get, um, if you'll get that area of your life stronger, 
then through him, you can do it. I love, I love, I don't know, I know. Romans chapter 8 is probably my favorite chapter in the Bible. It's a tie verse. But I, I just, I love how it reads here, which, which is, it's talking about this. Chapter 7 is about the frustration we have. Why? Because there's a hole in the roof and we can't fix it. We could, have you ever walked down uh, the aisle at uh, Walmart and they got buckets all over because it's raining? And it's kind of like, well, you just fixed the hole in the roof, but, but they put all the natural, well, so it gets natural lighting through there. Just, just fix the roof. Quit getting frustrated because you got to buy a bunch. We're going to invest in a ton of buckets instead of just fix the roof. That's what Romans 7 is about. It's like I'm trying to live the godly life. I'm trying to live above and not beneath. I'm trying to, I'm trying to take care of the whole. I put duct tape up there. Duct tape fit, fixes everything, right? All you need in life is duct tape and WD-40. It fixes everything. I put duct tape up there and it's still leaking. I don't understand it. But you got to do the things the right way. You go... My budget. I don't have enough money. My money never lasts to the end. I've got too much week at the end of my paycheck. I don't know what to do. Oh, I'll work overtime. I'll work extra hours. I'll get a job on the weekends. I'll do this. I'll, I'll work extra. Flesh, flesh, man-made. And, and then you get there. And then what happens the day, you know, you, you, you're tired. You're worn out. You're fatigued because you're trying to take care of a problem in the fleshly manner. And God's telling us today is that it may seem like your life. You know, I believe that most of us in here, that there's areas of our life, man, that, 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 that today is so, you're just like, thank you, Father. I'm so blessed. But there might be some areas of your life that, this seemed like it's just a hole in the roof. And you've tried your hardest to get it clogged up, but there's only one way to do it. And that is through your spirit man. Doing things, being guided, directed, and living by your spirit man. Doing what the spirit man tells you to do. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. Death can't reign in me anymore. For what the law could not do and that it was weak, Got to do, 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 do. I said do, do. God sending His only Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemns sin in the flesh. For the righteousness of God, for the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, do, 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 but after the Spirit. Just rest. Quit stressing over your situation and prophesy over it. Quit getting annoyed at your, your co-workers. Listen, prophesy over them. And either, either they'll become better, they'll become better, or, or if you're prophesying over your work environment, they may have to leave. But I don't want them to lose their job. Can't have them both ways, okay? <laughs> prophesy over it. I've got, I've got the most peaceful workplace. What do we have tendency to do if we don't have a peaceful workplace? We complain over it until, until and, be, and, and beg God, get me out of here. It's the worst place. Prophesy over it. You said I'm having prophesying. Build up your spirit, man. I don't, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but there's death. There's death when you operate by flesh. Holes, more holes. But there's life those that walk in their spirit man speak the word over their situation prophesy over dead bones amen hallelujah heavenly father i love you um i stand up here uh, it's kind of like the apostle paul where I, I i haven't figured it all out i mean i know i know there are areas in my life that uh, that i'm still trying to get 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 going but i do know this 
that if a man can control his mouth, if we can take the words of our mouth as seriously as you do, there was no place, there was no place at the beginning where God said, man, it's dark out here, because it would have just been to stay dark. It wasn't until he started prophesying to the darkness and said, light be, that light was. And so if we'll just simply understand who we are, first of all, that, that's, that, that, is, that is such a major part of it is understanding who we are. We are creators by creation, by, 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 by the creator of the universe. He created us to be creators after his image. And so the things that we speak are being created. The things that we prophesy will come to pass. And so if the words of my lips are going to come to pass, I want to make sure that I'm putting my angels to work and not the forces of the enemy. And so, Father, I just, I pray, Father, this morning for my beloved, for your beloved. I pray, Father, for their hearts and their, that, that their, their souls, their spirits, Father, that, that they, they'll, they'll have more of a desire and a passion, Father, to, to understand this and, and to carry this point out to watch, their, watch the words of their mouth. You love them so much that you put within their hands the ability to change their tomorrows. Yes, because of what Jesus did. I'm not arguing that. Yes, because of the power that you've given to the covenants that you broke with us. Yes, that's not a question. But you loved us so much that you said, if you want the blessings, I place it in your hands. The ability for blessing or cursing is in your hands. It's not anybody else's hands. What, what did your parents say to you as a kid? That means nothing compared to what you're speaking of yourself today. What did your boss say? What did your coworker say? What did, that means nothing compared to what's coming out of your mouth because you are the greatest, we are the greatest prophets over our own lives. Hallelujah. We love you. In Jesus' name.